Hello, and welcome to Goose Drunks. Ooh. Ooh. Welcome back to Goose Drunks. Uh, it has been a couple days since the last one we've done, but I thought just for Halloween we'll do two in one month. Um, some of you may have noticed I took a break. I actually have just been like streaming and stuff, so thanks to everyone who came and watched my streams, but this is something else. This is Goose Drunks. So we are going to be doing one that we promised to do ages ago, and by we, I mean me. I promised to do ages ago. The Haunted Mask. For this autumnal book, we will be drinking an autumnal drink. Apple-flavored energy drink and vodka in my official Goose Drunks, R.L. Stein. It's so beautiful. Just give it a experimental sip to make sure this is as disgusting as I suspect it will be. Six out of ten disgusting. Without further dilly-dallying, because we've had plenty of that, Let's begin. Goosebumps, The Haunted Mask by R.L. Stein. Chapter one. What are you going to be for Halloween? Sabrina Mason asked. She moved her fork around in the bright yellow macaroni on her lunch tray, but didn't take a bite. Carly Beth Caldwell sighed and shook her head. The overhead light on the lunchroom ceiling made her straight brown hair gleam. I don't know, a witch maybe? Sabrina's like, Carly Beth, you are afraid of witches. Why are you going to be a witch on Halloween? That's just silly. Carly Beth is like, I'm not afraid of witches. You just think I'm a big scaredy cat, don't you? Sabrina giggled. Yes. She flipped her black ponytail behind her shoulders with a quick toss of her head. (laughs) Carly Beth, what about last week? Remember at my house? Sabrina ripped open a bag of tortilla chips and offered some across the table to her friend. It's not in quotes, but all we have seen her do is bully her, so... What am I to assume here, RL? You mean the ghost thing? Carly Beth replied, frowning. That was really stupid. That you believed it, Sabrina said with a mouthful of chips. You really believed my attic was haunted. Sorry. That was so mean, Carly Beth complained, rolling her eyes. Then when you heard the footsteps coming down the stairs, your face went all white and you screamed, Sabrina recalled. It was only Chuck and Steve. You know I'm afraid of ghosts, Carly Beth said, blushing. And snakes and bugs and loud noises and dark rooms and witches, Sabrina declared. I don't see why you have to make fun of me, Carly Beth pouted, because she's not your friend, Carly Beth. Everyone drink for the Carly Beths of this world. This thing is the color of nightmares. Carly Beth is scared of too many things, and I am scared of just one thing. This drink. I don't see why you have to make fun of me, Carly Beth pouted. She shoved her lunch tray away. I don't see why everyone always thinks it's so much fun to try to scare me. Even you, my best friend. She's not your friend. Maybe I'll scare you someday, Carly Beth threatened. Her friend laughed. (laughs) No way. So basically, Carly Beth's very short and looks very young. And Sabrina is taller and more sophisticated looking. And the implication is prettier. So everyone who saw them together assumed that Sabrina was 12 or 13. But Carly Beth was older than her. Maybe I won't be a witch, Carly Beth said thoughtfully, resting her chin on her hands. Maybe I'll be a disgusting monster with hanging eyeballs and green slime dripping down my face and a loud crash made Carly Beth scream. Took her a few seconds to realize that it was just a lunch tray hitting the floor. She turned to see Gabe Moser, his face bright red, drop to his knees and start scooping his lunch off the floor. The lunchroom rang out with cheers and applause. Way to go, Gabe! Carly Beth hunched down in her seat, embarrassed that she had screamed. Her breathing had just returned to normal when a strong hand grabbed her shoulder from behind. Carly Beth's shriek echoed through the room. End of chapter one. Not really a dun-dun-dun moment, so let's just keep going. Chapter two. She heard laughter. At another table, someone yelled, Way to go, Steve! So it was her friend, Steve Boswell, standing behind her, a mischievous grin on his face. Gotcha, he said, letting go of her shoulder. Steve pulled out the chair next to Carly Beth's and lowered himself over its back. His best friend, Chuck Green, slammed his book bag onto the table and then sat down next to Sabrina. Steve and Chuck looked so much alike they could have been brothers. Both were tall and thin with straight brown hair, which they usually hid under baseball caps. Both had dark brown eyes and goofy grins. Both wore faded blue jeans and dark colored long sleeve t-shirts. And both of them loved to scare Carly Beth. So basically, this fun, fun dynamic in this friend group is everyone tries to scare Carly Beth and Carly Beth gets scared every time and hates it. And she's never able to scare them back, not even once. 
Then they give her, then they do this like horrible prank. Hold on. I'm just going to read this because it's so disgusting. Steve offers her a sandwich. He says, want a, what does Steve sound like? Want a sandwich? I don't want it. Carly Beth sniffed it suspiciously. What kind is it? I'm starving. It's a turkey sandwich here. So Carly Beth takes the sandwich and she takes a big bite of it. As she started to chew, she realized that both Steve and Chuck were staring at her with big grins on their faces. Something tasted funny, kind of sticky and sour. Carly Beth stopped chewing. Chuck and Steve were laughing now. Sabrina looked confused. Carly Beth uttered a disgusted groan and spit the chewed up sandwich hunk into a napkin. Then she pulled the bread apart and saw a big brown worm resting on top of the turkey. Disgusting. Ew. Do you know what's frightening about that? That people would treat their friends this way. That's unacceptable to me. The room erupted with laughter. Cruel laughter. I ate a worm. I'm going to be sick, Carly Beth groaned. She jumped to her feet and stared angrily at Steve. How could you, she demanded. It isn't funny. It isn't a real worm, Chuck said. Steve was laughing too hard to talk. Huh? Carly Beth gazed down at it and felt a wave of nausea rise up from her stomach. It isn't real. It's rubber. Pick it up, Chuck urged. Okay, so he almost poisoned her with rubber that you're not supposed to eat. This is not better. Go ahead. It isn't real. Pick it up, Chuck said, grinning. Carly Beth reached down with two fingers and reluctantly picked the brown worm from the sandwich. It felt warm and sticky. Gotcha again, Chuck said with a laugh. It was real. A real worm. That's so gross and awful. Carly Beth, you don't need any of these people. With a horrified cry, Carly Beth tossed the worm at Chuck, who was laughing wildly. And she leaped away from the table, knocking the chair over. As the chair clattered noisily against the hard floor, Carly Beth covered her mouth and ran gagging from the lunchroom. I can still taste it, she thought. I can still taste the worm in my mouth. I'll pay them back for this, Carly Beth thought bitterly as she ran. I'll pay them back. I really will. As she pushed through the double doors and hurtled toward the girls' room, the cruel laughter followed her across the hall. Dun, dun, dun. Carly Beth ran all the way home, three long blocks. Oh, three whole blocks. Wow. Her anger grew with every step. How could they do that to me? They're supposed to be my friends. Great point, Carly, Carly Beth. I keep wanting to call her Carly Ray Beth. That's not her name. Why do they think it's so funny to scare me? These kids are mean, Carly Ray Bethson. She burst into the house. Anybody home, she called, stopping in the hallway and leaning against the banister to catch her breath. Her mother hurried out from the kitchen. Carly Beth, hi, what's wrong? I ran all the way, Carly Beth told her, pulling off her blue windbreaker. Why? Mrs. Caldwell asked. Just felt like it, Carly Beth replied moodily. So Carly Beth takes this moment to reflect on the fact that she doesn't look anything like her mother, as kids do. Her mom is tall, uh, has thick, coppery curls, lively gray-green eyes, extremely energetic, seldom stood still, talked as rapidly as she moved. Today, she was wearing a paint-stained gray sweatshirt over black lycra tights. What a look. I love this woman. Is she available to hang out after this? Why so grumpy? Mrs. Caldwell asked. Anything you'd care to talk about? Carly Beth shook her head. Not really. She didn't feel like telling her mother that she had become the laughingstock of Walnut Avenue Middle School. Come here. I have something to show you, Mrs. Caldwell said, tugging Carly Beth toward the living room. Look, Mrs. Caldwell declared, grinning and gesturing to the mantelpiece. Carly Beth followed her mother's gaze to the mantel and cried out in surprise. It's a head. Not just any head, Mrs. Caldwell said, beaming. Go on. Take a closer look. Carly Beth took a few steps toward the mantelpiece, her eyes on the head staring back at her. It took her a few moments to recognize the straight brown hair, the brown eyes, the short snip of a nose, the round cheeks. It's me, she cried, walking up to it. Yes, life size, Mrs. Caldwell declared. Bonkers. Love it. What a mom. What a move. I just came from my art class at the museum. I finished it today. What do you think? I love it. Carly Beth picked it up and studied it closely. It looks just like me, mom. Really? What's it made of? Okay, so she doesn't seem like she hates it, which is nice. Plaster of Paris, her mother replied, taking it from Carly Beth and holding it up so that Carly Beth was face to face, eye to eye with herself. You have to be careful. It's delicate. It's hollow. See? Chekhov's delicate hollow head. Carly Beth stared intently at the head, peering into her own eyes. It's kind of creepy, she muttered, predictably. You mean because I did such a good job? It's just creepy, that's all, Carly Beth said. Just be nice to her. God, Carly Beth. Kind of a shit, aren't you? Talk about a bust daughter. Psst. 
Her mom's feelings are hurt. She wants to know if Carly Beth likes it. Carly Beth is like, yeah, fine. It's really good. But why did you make it? And Mrs. Caldwell's like, because I love you. Why else? Honestly, Carly Beth, you have the strangest reaction to things. I worked really hard on this sculpture. I'm sorry, mom. I like it. I really do. Carly Beth insisted. It was just a surprise. That's all. It's great. It looks just like me. I, I had a bad day. That's all. Carly Beth convinces herself through some trick of the light that her fake head smiled at her. It probably didn't at this point in the story. Incidentally, Carly Beth, your duck costume is all ready. I put it on your bed. Duck costume? You saw a duck costume at the mall, remember? Mrs. Caldwell carefully placed the sculpted head on the mantle. The one with all the feathers and everything. Yep, you know, ducks. You thought it would be funny to be a duck this Halloween, so I made you a duck costume. Oh, right, Carly Beth said, her mind spinning. Do I really want to be a stupid duck this Halloween, she thought. She's such an ungrateful kid. Come on, Carly Beth, your mom works so hard, and for why? And for whomst? Like I said, it's mostly vibes right now. Carly Beth had forgotten all about the duck costume. I don't want to be cute this Halloween, she thought. I want to be scary. There can be scary ducks. No more Mr. Nice Duck. She had seen some really scary masks in the window of a new party store that had opened a few blocks from school. One of them she knew would be perfect. But now she'd have to walk around in feathers and have everyone quack at her and make fun of her. So Carly goes up to her bedroom, seething that her mother had dared to listen to her, and hesitates outside of the door. It had been pulled closed for some reason. She never closed the door. Okay, weird. She listened carefully. She thought she heard someone breathing on the other side of the door. Someone or something. The breathing grew louder. Carly Beth pressed an ear to the door. What was in her room? There was only one way to find out. Carly Beth pulled open the door and uttered a startled cry. Dun, dun, dun. That feels like our first proper dun, 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 you know. Quack! With a hideous cry, an enormous white feathered duck, its eyes wild and frenzied, leaped at Carly Beth. As she staggered backwards in astonishment, the duck knocked her over and pinned her to the hallway floor. Quack! Do you like my impression of a duck? The costumes come alive! That was Carly Beth's first frightened thought. Then she quickly realized the truth. Noah, get off me, she demanded, trying to push the big duck off her chest. Quack! Noah, I mean it, she told her eight-year-old brother. What are you doing in my costume? It's supposed to be my costume. Well, a second ago, you didn't want it, Carly Beth. Make up your mind. I was just trying it on, Noah said, his blue eyes staring down at her through the white and yellow duck mask. Did I scare you? He's a younger brother. <laughs> this is his voice. Deal with it. Not a bit, Carly Beth lied. Now get up. You're heavy. He refused to budge. Why do you always want everything that's mine? Carly Beth demanded angrily. And why do you think it's so funny to try to scare me all the time? She asked. I can't help it if you get scared every time I, tr I say boo, he replied nastily. That's what babies sound like. Babies who are being mean. I'm drinking for how stupid and bad my accent is. He quacked a few more times, flapping the feathery wings. Then he climbed to his feet. Can I have this costume? It's really neat. Carly Beth frowned and shook her head. You have feathers all over me. You're molting. I don't care. Can I have this costume? It fits me, will we? I don't know, Carly Beth told him. Maybe. The phone rang in her room. Get lost, okay? Go fly south for the winter or something. Oh, she's got a phone in her room. Ooh, fancy. As she ran to her desk, she saw white feathers all over her bed. That costume will never survive to Halloween, she thought. She picked up the receiver. Hello? Oh, hi, Sabrina. Yeah, I'm okay. So Sabrina calls and is like, hey, the science fair is tomorrow. We have to finish the project for the science fair tomorrow. It's a ping pong ball universe. Uh, so Carly Beth tells her to come over after dinner. They chatted for a while. Carly Beth tells Sabrina how mad she was about lunch, obviously. And she says, why do Chuck and Steve think it's so funny to do things like that to me? Sabrina was silent for a moment. I guess it's because you're so scarable, Carly Beth. Scarable? You scream so easily, Sabrina said. Other people get scared, but they're more quiet about it. You know Chuck and Steve. They don't really mean to be mean. They put a worm in her food. They just think it's funny. <laughs> it's just a laugh, Carly Beth. <laughs> I don't think it's funny, Carly Beth replied. I'm not going to be scarable anymore. I mean it. I'm not ever going to get sc I'm not ever going to scream or get frightened again. I believe her. So we skip right ahead to the science fair. We talk about 
all the different science fair projects for a really long time from people like Martin Goodman and Mary Sue Chong and Brian Baldwin, all names that real people definitely have. The judges are walking around being impressed by everyone's project, and then suddenly, Carly Beth heard an excited shout from somewhere behind her on the stage. My tarantula! Hey, my tarantula got out! Oh, it's Steve's voice, sorry. My tarantula! She recognized Steve's voice. Where's my tarantula? He called. Several kids uttered startled cries. Some kids laughed. I'm not going to get scared, Carly Beth told herself, swallowing hard. She knew she was terrified of tarantulas. But this time, she was determined not to show it. Carly Beth, at this point, just make a list of what you're not scared of. But then, she felt something pinch the back of her leg and dig its spiny pincer into her skin. And Carly Beth uttered a shrill scream of terror that rang out through the auditorium. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, that is scary. I will drink for that for reals. That's terrifying. I think tarantulas are cute, and I don't want to get bit by one on the ankle. Carly Beth freaks out, obviously, She kicks her legs wildly and absolutely wrecks the science fair project as a result. The ping ping pong balls that they had painted to look like planets are bouncing all over the floor. It took Carly Beth a long time to realize that everyone was laughing. Oh my God, again, Carly Beth. Carly Beth again. She spun around to find Steve down on his knees behind her. He made a pinching motion with his thumb and finger. Gotcha again, he said, grinning up at her. With a cry of anger, Carly Beth tried to kick Steve in the side. (laughs) Valid. (laughs) Get him. But he spun away. She missed. Help me pick up the planets, she heard Sabrina say. But Sabrina seemed far, far away. You're on your own with that one, Atlas. All Carly Beth could hear were the pounding of her heart and the laughter of the kids all around her. Steve had climbed to his feet. He and Chuck were side by side, grinning at her, slapping each other. High fives. Oh, my God. In chapter five of the book. RL, a gift from you to me. Thank you. Carly Beth, help me, Sabrina pleaded. But Carly Beth turned around, jumped off the stage and ran, escaping up the dark auditorium aisle. I'm going to scare them. Really scare them. But how? Okay. I'm already stopping here. Big stop right here. If we needed them to do a mean prank to her, to motivate her to do a similarly mean prank back, like say, I don't know, get a really scary mask, I'm guessing... The worm one was sufficient or the science fair one was sufficient. RL, we do not need both. I know you got to hit that crisp 121 on the page count, but we don't need this many pages of this many mean pranks in a row. Why does this girl even go to school at this point? Skipping ahead, it's Halloween. Sabrina and Carly make plans to meet at 7.30 at Sabrina's house and then go trick-or-treating through the entire neighborhood. The earlier, the better. We'll get more candy, Sabrina said. Did Steve call you? Yeah, he called, Carly Beth replied bitterly. Did he apologize? Yeah, he apologized, Carly Beth muttered, rolling her eyes. Big deal. I mean, he already made me look like a jerk in front of the entire school. What good is an apology? I think he felt bad, Sabrina replied. Well, there's a first time for everything, isn't there? I hope he felt bad, Carly Beth exclaimed. It was mean. It was a dirty trick, Sabrina agreed. And then she added, but you gotta admit it was kind of funny. Has it stopped raining, Sabrina asked, changing the subject. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna get anywhere on that one, Sabrina. Carly Beth pulled back the curtain to glance out her bedroom window. The evening sky was charcoal gray. Dark clouds hovered low, but the rain had stopped. The street glistened wetly under the light of a street lamp. Ew. I don't like that as a descriptor. I just don't. I'm sorry, RL, I don't. I think you could have found a better word. You could actually, he could have actually just said that the street glistened under the light of the street lamp. He didn't need to say wetly. He chose to say wetly for us. So Carly Beth's like, no rain, gotta go see you at 7.30. Sabrina wants to know what her costume is and Carly Beth tells her it's a surprise and hangs up. Carly Beth's plan had been to go to the new party store after school and pick up the ugliest, most disgusting, scariest mask they had. But her mother had picked her up after school and insisted that she stay home and watch Noah for a couple of hours. Mrs. Caldwell hadn't returned home until 5.15. Now it was nearly a quarter till six. There was no way the party store would still be open, Carly Beth thought, frowning at the duck costume. Maybe that store stays open late on Halloween. So she goes into her dresser and pulls out her wallet to check to see if she even has enough money to buy something scary. 
She has $30, which she tells us is her life savings. Now, let's see. Hold on. It has a, it, it, this is actually important information that we need to know. When did this book come out? 1993. This book came out in 1993. Hold on. I'm going to do a quick, a quick search on my cellular phone. $30 in 1993. That's about $60 today. It's pretty good for an 11 year old. And she could probably get an okay mask for that. I hope she does. And I hope nothing bad happens. I hope she has a great Halloween. And then she goes home and she eats candy and she goes to sleep and she thinks to herself, I don't need any of those losers. I'm Carly Beth. And I used to have $60. So Carly's uh, walking down the street. She passes the old carpenter mansion looming over its dark weed choked lawn. Everyone, hashtag blaze it. Everyone said the ramshackle old house was haunted by people who had been murdered inside it a hundred years ago. With that total non sequitur out of the way, Carly keeps going, and around the corner, the party store comes into view. The window was lighted, revealing two rows of Halloween masks staring out at the street. But was the store still open? She stopped for a second to examine the masks in the window. There were gorilla masks, monster masks, some sort of blue-haired alien mask. Pretty good, she thought. These are pretty ugly, but they probably have even scarier ones inside. The lights were on in the store. She peered through the glass door, then she tried turning the knob. It didn't move. She tried again. She tried pulling the door open. Then she tried pushing. No, no way. She was too late. The store was closed. Dun, dun, dun. I hate when stores close. So Carly Beth is pouting outside of the closed store, which it's totally her fault she didn't make it to. There were literally so many days when she could have gone and she didn't. And then suddenly a dark shadow moved over the glass, blocking Carly Beth's view. She gasped and took a step back. It took her a moment to realize that the shadow was a man, a man in a black suit staring out at her, a look of surprise on his face. Are, are you closed? Carly Beth shouted through the glass. The man gestured that he couldn't hear her. He turned the lock and pulled the door open an inch. Uh, uh, can I help you? He had shiny black hair parted in the middle and slicked down on his head and a pencil thin black mustache. Are you open? Carly Beth asked timidly. I need a Halloween mask. Uh, it is very late. He pulled the door open another few inches. We normally close at five. That's stuck. I really would like to buy a mask, Carly Beth told him in her most determined voice. The man's tiny black eyes peered into hers. His expression remained blank. Oh, ye come in, he said quietly. As Carly Beth stepped past him into the store, she saw that he wore a black cape. It must be a Halloween costume, she told herself. I'm sure he doesn't wear that all the time. That's what I think on Halloween when I see people wearing what are obviously costume pieces. Probably doesn't wear that all the time. You're so right. Uh, quel sort de mask are you looking for? The man asked, closing the door behind him. A, a scary one, she stammered. He pointed to the wall. Uh, the gorilla mask has been very popular. It has real hair. Real hair from what? Carly Beth stared up at the gorilla mask. She didn't really want to be a gorilla. It was too ordinary. It wasn't scary enough. Do you have anything scarier? She asked. He flipped his cape back over the shoulder of his black suit. How about that yellowish one with the pointy ears? He suggested, pointing. I believe it is some sort of Star Trek character. No, Carly Beth shook her head. I need something really scary. A strange smile formed under the man's thin mustache. His eyes burned into hers as if trying to read her thoughts. Look around, he said with a sweep of his hand. Everything I have left in stock is up on the walls. This kid is keeping him past clothes rejecting everything he's kindly showing her, even though he didn't have to let her in at all. If I were him, I would give her a haunted mask too. She's looking around at all the masks. She's annoying the man. The man's annoying her. I think she should just go trick-or-treating in the duck costume that her mom made her with love and possibly like glue or something because the feathers keep falling off. She's rejecting everything. Freddy Krueger gets name-checked because apparently that's allowed. E.T. gets also name-checked. She's just looking and looking and looking, taking the sweetest time possible. No rush at all doesn't seem to understand the privilege it is that this man even let her in the store to begin with. Mademoiselle, I'm afraid I must ask you to make your choice, the man in the cape said softly. He had moved behind the narrow counter at the front and was turning a key in the cash register. We are closed. I'm sorry, Carly Beth started. It's just that the phone rang before she could finish explaining. The man picked it up quickly and began talking in a low voice, turning his back to Carly Beth. She wandered toward the back of the store, studying the masks as she walked. Not right, not right, not right, Carly Beth thought, frowning. She hesitated when she spotted a narrow door slightly open at the back of the store. Was there another room? Were there more masks back there? 
Carly Beth gave the door a hesitant push to peek inside. The door creaked open. Pale orange light washed over the small, shadowy back room. Carly Beth stepped inside and gasped in amazement. Dun, dun, dun. Two dozen empty eye sockets stared down at Carly Beth. She gaped in horror at the distorted, deformed faces. They were masks, she realized. Two shelves of masks. But the masks were so ugly, so grotesque, so real. They made her breath catch in her throat. It's pretty scary. Although Carly, Carly, Carly Beth, Carly Ray Beth, Carly Ray Beth's a scary cat, so she's kind of an unreliable narrator, but I choose to believe her on this one. One mask had long, stringy yellow hair falling over its bulging green forehead. A hairy black rat's head poked up from a knot in the hair, the rat's eyes gleaming like two dark jewels. Ratatouille. The mask beside it had a large nail stuck through the eye hole. Thick, wet-looking blood poured from the eye down the cheek. Chunks of rotting skin appeared to be falling off another mask, revealing gray bone underneath. An enormous black insect, some kind of grotesque beetle, poked out from between the green and yellow decayed teeth. Carly Beth's horror mixed with excitement. She took a step into the room. The wooden floorboards creaked noisily beneath her. She took another step closer to the grotesque, grinning masks. They seemed so real, so horribly real. The faces had such detail, the skin appeared to be made of flesh, not rubber or plastic. These are perfect, she thought, her heart pounding. These are just what I was looking for. They look terrifying, just propped up on these shelves. She imagined Steve and Chuck seeing one of these masks coming at them in the dark of the night. She pictured herself uttering a blood-curdling scream and leaping out from behind a tree in one of them. She imagined the horrified expressions on the boys' faces. She pictured Steve and Chuck shrieking in terror and running for their lives. Perfect. Perfect. What a laugh that would be. What a victory. So after all this looking around, she finally clocks her eyes on a really ugly mask on one of the lower shelves. It had a bulging, bald head. Its skin was a putrid yellow-green. Its enormous, sunken eyes were an eerie orange and seemed to glow. It had a broad, flat nose smashed in like a skeleton's nose. I would not call a skeleton's nose smashed in, point of order, but we'll just... Staring hard at the hideous mask, Carly Beth reached out a hand toward it. Reluctantly, she touched the broad forehead, and as she touched it, the mask cried out, Dun, dun, dun! Oh, that's scary! Why would it talk? It's a mask! Carly Beth shrieked and jerked back her hand. The mask grinned at her. Its orange eyes glowed brightly. The lips appeared to curl back over the fangs. She suddenly felt dizzy. What is going on here? As she staggered back away from the shelves, she realized that the angry cry hadn't come from the mask. Come on, Carly Beth! Facial awareness. My God. Carly Beth spun around to see the black-caped store owner glaring at her from the doorway. I am sorry you saw these, the man said in a low, threatening voice. Sorry, I am sorry you saw these. He took a step toward her, his cape brushing the doorway. I am so sorry, he repeated, his small, dark eyes burning into hers. He took another step closer. Carly Beth backed away from him. Then she uttered a startled cry as she backed into the display shelves. The hideous masks jiggled and quaked as if alive. What, what do you mean? She managed to choke out. I, I was just... I am sorry you saw these because they are not for sale. So the store owner starts rearranging the masks and Carly Beth's like, why aren't they for sale? Too scary, the man replied. He turned to smile at her. But I want a really scary one, Carly Beth told him. I want that one. She pointed to the mask she had touched, the mask with the open mouth and its terrifying jagged fangs. Too scary. The man repeated, pushing his cape behind his shoulder. It's Halloween, Carly Beth protested. I have a really scary gorilla mask, the man said, motioning for Carly Beth to go back to the front room. Very scary. Looks like it's crawling. I will give you a good price on it since it's so late. Carly Beth shook her head, her arms crossed defiantly in front of her. Like I said before, a gorilla mask won't do it. It won't scare Steve and it won't scare Chuck. She said, as though that means anything to him. I have to have that one, she insisted. It's so scary, I'm almost afraid to touch it. It's perfect. It's too scary, the man repeated, lowering his eyes to it. He ran his hands over the green forehead. I cannot take the responsibility. Why have it out then? My God, my man. What is this? 
what is this reverse psychology bullshit you're pulling here? I'm sorry, this chair is so loud. It's all so mad at the, at the sales guy. The sales garçon. They go back and forth like this for a while. Mademoiselle, the store owner started, glancing impatiently at his watch. I really must insist that you make up your mind. I'm a patient man, but please, Carly Beth begged, please sell it to me. Here, look. She dug into her jeans pocket and pulled out all the money she had brought. $30, Carly Beth said, shoving the wadded up bills into the man's hand. I'll give you $30 for it. That's enough, isn't it? It is not a matter of money, he told her. These masks are not for sale. With an exasperated sigh, he started toward the doorway that led to the front of the store. Please, I need it. I really need it. Carly Beth begged, chasing after him. This kid sucks. Like, girl, this guy just wants to go home. It's Halloween. Let him go to whatever fucking rager he's got planned. My lord, he's already dressed for it. The masks are too real, he insisted, gesturing to the shelves. I'm warning you. Please? Please? He shut his eyes. You will be sorry. No, I won't. I know I won't. Carly Beth exclaimed gleefully, seeing that he was about to give in. He opened his eyes. He shook his head. She could see he was debating with himself. With a sigh, he tucked the money into his coat pocket. Then he carefully lifted the mask from the shelf, straightening the pointed ears, and started to hand it to her. Thanks, she cried, eagerly snatching the mask from his hands. She held the mask by its flat nose. It felt soft and surprisingly warm. Thanks again, she cried, hurrying to the front, the mask gripped tightly in her hand. And they give you a bag for it, the man called after her, which is very funny of him, frankly. But Carly Beth was already out of the store. She crossed the street and started to run toward home. The sky was black. No stars poked through. The street still glistened wetly. So Carly Beth is fucking stoked that she finally has a way to get back at all her shitty friends for all their horrible mean pranks. And it is spend the equivalent of 60 US dollars to put a mask on one time. Carly Beth stopped under a streetlight and held up the mask, gripping it with both hands by its pointed ears. It grinned up at her, the two crooked rows of fangs hanging over its thick, rubbery lips. Then, tucking it carefully under one arm, she ran the rest of the way home. Stopping at the bottom of the driveway, she gazed up at her house, the front windows all glowing brightly, the porch light sending white light over the lawn. I've got to try this mask out on someone, she thought eagerly. I've got to see just how good it is. Her brother's grinning face popped into her mind. Noah, of course, she said aloud. Noah has really been asking for it. Grinning gleefully, Carly Beth hurried up the driveway, eager to make Noah her first victim. Dun, dun, dun. Nearly at the bottom of this. Which is worrying because we have so much book to get through still. Ah, dun, 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 indeed. (laughs) Carly's holding the mask in her hands. She's sneaking through her house, trying to find Noah. Then she hears his footsteps above her head. Noah must be up in his room, she realized. He's probably putting on his Halloween costume. At the last minute, Noah had decided he wanted to be a cockroach, which is frankly very funny of him. Well, the little bug is in for a surprise, Carly Beth thought evilly. She examined her mask. This should send that cockroach scampering under the sink. So Noah's in his room listening to loud music, quote, an old heavy metal song, which could mean anything to RL. And then, gripping the mask by the rubbery neck, she raised it carefully over her head, and pulled it slowly down. It was surprisingly warm inside. The mask fit tighter than Carly Beth had imagined. It had a funny smell, kind of sour, kind of old, like damp newspapers that had been left for years in an attic or garage. Evocative. She means it smells like mold. What she's saying is it smells moldy. I don't want to be like, just say that, but like, just say that, you know? (laughs) I should have stopped in front of a mirror, she fretted. I can't see if it looks right. The mask felt very tight. Her breathing echoed noisily in the flat nose. She forced herself to ignore the sour smell that invaded her nose. Nose, twice in a row, huh? Couldn't think of a different way to describe. It's okay. She held on tightly to the banister as she crept up the stairs. It was hard to see the steps through the eye holes. The heavy metal music ended as she stepped onto the landing. She crept silently down the hall and stopped outside Noah's door. Carly Beth edged her head into the doorway and peeked into the brightly lit room. Noah was standing in front of the mirror, adjusting the two long cockroach feelers above his head. Noah, I'm coming for you. Carly Beth called. To her surprise, her voice came out gruff and low. It wasn't her voice at all. That is scary. I am scared. Nothing should change your voice except for puberty or a decent vocal coach or possibly an accident or maybe um, just a decision you've made, an affect, or maybe you move to a different country and you're, t- and you're an intolerable person. There are many reasons that your voice should change, but not because of a mask. 
Huh? Startled, Noah spun around. Noah, I've got you, Carly Beth shrieked, her voice deep, raspy, evil. No! Her brother uttered a hushed cry of protest. Even under his bug makeup, Carly Beth could see him go pale. She darted into the room, her arms outstretched as if ready to grab him. No, who are you? How did you get in? He doesn't even recognize me, Carly Beth thought gleefully, and he's scared to death. Was it the hideous face, the deep rumble of a voice, or both? Carly Beth didn't care. The mask was definitely a success. Yeah, I moved my entire camera so that you could see Goose better. I'm a professional. I've got you, she screamed, surprising herself at how scary her voice sounded from inside the mask. No, please, Noah begged. Mom! He backed toward the bed, trembling all over, his feelers quivering in fright. Mom, help! Carly Beth burst out laughing. The laughter came out in a deep rumble. It's me, stupid, she cried. What a yellow-bellied scaredy cat. Huh? Still huddled by the bed, Noah stared hard at her. Don't you recognize my jeans, my sweater? It's me, you idiot, Carly Beth declared in the gruff voice. But your face, that mask, Noah stammered. It really scared me. I mean, it didn't sound like you, Carly Beth. Carly Beth tugged at the bottom of the mask, trying to lift it off. It felt hot and sticky. She tried pulling the bottom with both hands, but the mask didn't budge. She raised her hands to the pointed ears and tried lifting it off. She tugged, then tugged harder. She tried pulling the mask off by the top of the head. It didn't move. Hey, it won't come off, she cried. The mask, it won't come off. Dun, dun, dun. That's so scary. Have you ever tried a ring on in a store and you can't get it off? This seems only slightly scarier than that. Okay, so because I accidentally put in basically one-to-one vodka and energy drink and I didn't realize I was out of energy drink, I have now topped it off with some Carrot turmeric uh, kombucha, which I'm hoping is a flavor combination that isn't (laughs) fucking vile. Could be worse. Could be better. What's going on here? Curly Beth cried, tugging at the mask with both hands. Stop it! Noah cried. His voice sounded angry, but his eyes revealed fear. Stop kidding around, Curly Beth. You're scaring me. I'm not kidding around, Curly Beth insisted in her harsh, raspy voice. I really can't. Get this off. Take it off. You're not funny, her brother shouted. It is actually very funny for me to imagine a person with the voice that I have decided to give her brother listening to heavy metal music. That's delightful to me. That's charming. I think it's great. With great effort, Carly Beth managed to slip her fingers under the neck of the mask. Then she pulled it away from her skin and lifted it off her head. The air felt so cool and sweet. She shook her hair free. Then she playfully tossed the mask at Noah. Good mask, huh? He let the mask bounce onto the bed. Then he picked it up hesitantly and examined it. Where'd you get it? He asked, poking a finger against the ugly fangs. At that new party store, she told him, wiping perspiration from her forehead. It's so hot inside it. Can I twine it on? Noah asked, pushing his fingers through the eye holes. Not now, I'm late, she replied. She laughed. He sure looked scared. He tossed the mask back at her, frowning. I was just pretending, he said. I knew it was you. Oh, for sure. She replied, rolling her eyes. For sure. She turned and headed toward the door, rolling the mask over her hand. The thing about Carly Beth is I don't uh, like her as a person. (laughs) She doesn't, like, have any good qualities. She um, is friends with awful people, which is already not great. But she's being bullied by them because she's scared, which is not inherently uh, a fault of hers. But her decision is not to try to become less scared is try to bring people down to her level. And that is a her problem. That is a Carly Beth problem. And she's mean to her younger brother, who is eight. And she's kind of snotty and ungrateful. And her mom tries her best. And she's just like kind of a dick about it. I don't like Carly Beth. And I hope something bad happens to her. How do you change your voice like that? Noah called after her. Carly Beth stopped at the doorway and turned back to him. Her smile gave way to a puzzled expression. That deep voice was the scariest part, Noah said, staring at the mask in her hand. How did you do that? I don't know, Carly Beth replied thoughtfully. I really don't know. By the time she got to her room, she was grinning again. The mask had worked. It had been a wonderful success. She is not freaked out enough about the voice thing. Look out, Chuck and Steve, she thought gleefully. You're next. I don't want to just jump out at them, Carly Beth thought playing her fingers over the sharp fangs. That's too boring. I want to do something they'll remember. 
something they'll never forget. Yep, that's what remember means. She ran her hands over the mask's pointy ears. Suddenly, she had an idea. Dun, dun, dun. So she pulls an old broom handle from the closet and examines the long wooden pole. Tiptoeing silently into the living room, Carly Beth stepped up to the mantel and pulled down the plaster of Paris head her mother had sculpted. This little brat. Oh my God. It really does look just like me, Carly Beth thought, holding the sculpture waist high and studying it carefully. It's so lifelike. Mom's really talented. Carefully, she placed the head on the broomstick. Carly Beth, you're the worst kid. People do not deserve to get bullied, but Carly Beth sucks. That's it. I'm putting my foot down. Treating her mother this way. She carried it over to the hallway mirror. It looks like I'm carrying my real head on a stick. Carly Beth thought, admiring it. A wide grin broke out across her face. Her eyes sparkled gleefully. Excellent. She leaned the head and stick against the wall and pulled on the mask. Once again... The sour aroma rushed into her nostrils. The heat of the mask seemed to wrap around her. The mask tightened against her skin as she pulled it down. Raising her eyes to the mirror, she nearly frightened herself. It's like a real face, she thought, unable to take her eyes away. My eyes seem a part of it. It doesn't look as if I'm peering out of eye holes. She moved the gruesome mouth up and down a few times. It moves like a real mouth, she realized. It doesn't look like a mask at all. It looks like a gross, deformed face. Working with both hands, she flattened the bulging forehead, smoothing it over her hair. Excellent, she repeated it to her. Excellent, she repeated to herself, feeling her excitement grow. Excellent. Excellent. She couldn't believe the man in the party store didn't want to sell it to her. It was the scariest, realist, ugliest mask she had ever seen. I will be the terror of Maple Avenue tonight. Carly Beth decided. Kids will be having nightmares about me for weeks, especially Chuck and Steve. Boo, she muttered to herself, pleased to hear that the gruff voice had returned. Hey, uh uh-oh, Carly Beth, pleased? She picked up the broomstick, carefully balanced her sculpted head on top of it, and started to the door. There's no way that thing is staying on the... She's going to break it, and her mom's heart is going to break along with it. Her mother's voice stopped her. Carly Beth, wait up! I want to see how you look in that duck costume. Uh Uh-oh, Carly Beth groaned out loud. Mom isn't going to like this. Dun, dun, dun. No, Carly Beth, probably your mom won't like that you used the bust of your own head that she lovingly sculpted with her two hands that birthed you for a cheap Halloween trick where you'll probably wind up breaking it and ruining all her hard work, you ungrateful brat. Anyway, maybe I should have told her about my change of plans, Carly Beth thought guiltily. I would have said something, but I didn't want to hurt mom's feelings. Now she's in for a shock, and she's going to be really angry when she sees I've borrowed her sculpture. She's going to make me put it back on the mantle. Yeah, that is the worst thing that's about to happen, Carly Beth. You're totally right. Breaking your mother's heart is way less bad than having to put your stupid, beautiful sculpture back on the mantle. She's going to ruin everything. Carly Beth sucks. I'm kind of in a hurry, Mom, Carly Beth called, her voice deep and raspy inside the mask. I'll see you later, okay? She pulled open the front door. You can wait one second while I see my costume on you, her mother called. She rounded the corner and came into view. I'm sunk, Carly Beth thought with a groan. Then the phone rang. (laughs) Convenient. Oh, darn. I better answer that. It's probably your father calling from Chicago. She disappeared back into the kitchen. Carly Beth breathed a sigh of relief. Saved by the bell, she thought. A relevant reference. In the year of our Lord, 1993. Balancing the head on the broomstick, she hurried out the door. She closed the door behind her and jogged down the front yard. It had become a clear, cool night. A pale half moon rose low over the bare trees. Fat brown leaves swirled around her ankles as she headed to the sidewalk. The plan was to meet Chuck and Steve in front of Sabrina's house. Carly Beth couldn't wait. I love Halloween, Carly Beth thought happily. She crossed the street onto Sabrina's block. On other Halloween nights, she had been frightened. Her friends were always playing mean tricks on her. Last year, Steve had slipped a very real-looking rubber rat into her trick-or-treat bag. These people are all terrible, actually. Everything bad that happens to all of them 
is deserved. That's the only conclusion I can draw at this point, at roughly the halfway point of this book. Chuck and Steve thought it was a riot, and so did Sabrina. They always spoiled Halloween for her. They thought it was so hilarious to scare Carly Beth and make her scream. Well, this year, I won't be the one screaming, she thought. This year, I'll be the one making everyone else scream. The head on the broom handle bounced and nearly fell off. Carly Beth slowed her pace. She glanced up at the head, shifting her grip on the broomstick. Chekhov's head that's about to fall off the broomstick. Chekhov's disappointed mother. (laughs) Hearing laughter, Carly Beth turned. Across the street, a group of trick-or-treaters was invading a brightly lit front porch. In the yellow porch light, Carly Beth saw a ghost, a mutant ninja turtle, not a teenage one, obviously, because they're all children, a Freddy Krueger, and a princess in a pink ball gown and a tinfoil crown. The kids were little. Two mothers watched them from the foot of the driveway. Carly Beth watched them get their candy. Then she walked the rest of the way to Sabrina's house. She climbed the front stoop, stepping into a white triangle of light from the porch light. She could hear voices inside the house, Sabrina shouting something to her mother, a TV on in the living room. Carly Beth adjusted her mask with her free hand. She straightened the gaping fanged mouth. Then she checked to make sure the head was balanced on the broomstick. She reached to ring Sabrina's doorbell, then stopped. Voices behind her. She turned and squinted into the darkness. Two costumed boys were approaching, shoving each other playfully on the sidewalk. Chuck and Steve. I'm just in time, Carly Beth thought happily. She leaped off the stoop and crouched behind a low evergreen shrub. Okay, guys, she thought eagerly, her heart pounding. Get ready for a scare. Dun, dun, dun. Carly Beth peered over the top of the shrub. The two boys were halfway up the driveway. It was too dark to get a good look at their costumes. One of them wore a long overcoat and a wide-brimmed Indiana Jones fedora. She couldn't really see the other one. So she's really excited. She's watching them uh, walk up the driveway really slowly. They're laughing with each other. They're, you know, being 11-year-old boys, hanging out, being friends, punching 11-year-old boy stuff. Peering into the darkness, Carly Beth watched them until they were nearly right in front of the shrub. Raising the broomstick with its staring head on the top, she leaped out. The boys shrieked, startled. She could see their dark eyes go wide as they gaped at her mask. A ferocious roar escaped her throat, a deep rumbling howl that frightened even her. Scary. At the terrifying sound, both boys cried out again. One of them actually dropped to his knees on the driveway. They both stared up at the head bobbing on the broomstick. It seemed to glare down at them. Another howl escaped Carly Beth's throat. It started low as if coming from far away and then pierced the air, raspy and deep, like the roar of an angry creature. Carly Beth heard rapid footsteps crunching over the dead leaves on the driveway. She saw a woman in a bulky down coat running up the driveway. Driveway twice in a row. He really does not know synonyms for words. Hey, what are you doing? The woman demanded, her voice shrill and angry. Are you scaring my kids? Carly Beth swallowed hard. She turned her eyes back to the two frightened boys. Wait, she cried, realizing they weren't Chuck and Steve. She stepped up to the two boys and put a hand on each of their shoulders. Are you two okay? Yeah, we're okay, Mom, the one in the overcoat and fedora replied. The other boy wore white makeup and a red clown nose. She jumped out at us, he told his mother, avoiding Carly Beth's stare. She scared us. The woman turned angrily to Carly Beth and shook her finger at her accusingly. (laughs) <laughs> don't you have anything better to do than to scare two young boys? Why don't you pick on someone your own age? Normally, Carly Beth would have apologized. She would have explained to the woman that she made a mistake, that she meant to scare two different boys. But hidden behind that ugly mask, still hearing the strange howl that had burst so unexpectedly from her throat, she didn't feel like apologizing. She felt anger, and she wasn't sure why. It's because she should... Talk to a therapist. Sounds like she has some latent rage issues that need working through, and she's blaming the mask. Go away, she rasped, waving the broomstick menacingly. The head, her head, stared down at the two startled boys. What did you say? Their mother demanded, her voice tight with growing outrage. I said go away. Carly Beth snarled in a voice so deep, so terrifying, that it frightened even her. The woman crossed her arms in front of the heavy down coat, Her eyes narrowed on Carly Beth. Who are you? What is your name? She demanded. Do you live around here? I'm so sorry about what the mom sounds like. I really didn't think she would have this many lines. 
Oh, no. Mom, let's just go, the boy with the clown face urged, tugging at her coat sleeve. Yeah, come on, his brother pleaded. Go away, I'm warning you, Carly Beth growled. The woman stood her ground, her arms tightly crossed, her eyes narrowed at Carly Beth. Just because it's Halloween doesn't give you the right. Mom, we want to get some candy, the clown pleaded, tugging his mother's sleeve harder. Come on. We're wasting the whole night, his brother complained. Carly Beth was breathing hard. Her breath escaped. It is so hard to say her name and then breathing and then breath in quick succession. Why does he do this to me? Does he not know I'm drunk reading this out loud? Does he have no consideration for my feelings? Carly Beth was breathing hard, her breath escaping the mask in low, noisy grunts. I sound like an animal, she thought, puzzled. What is happening to me? She could feel her anger growing. Her breathing rattled noisily in the tight mask. Her face felt burning hot. Her anger raged through her chest. Her entire body was trembling. She felt about to burst. I'm going to tear this woman apart, Carly Beth decided. Decided is very scary of a verb to pick. Dun, dun, dun. Damn, Carly Beth, that hasn't even been an hour. Chill out, girl. You aren't, aren't going to have any rage left for the rest of the night. It's called pacing yourself. Ow. I'll chew her to bits. I'll tear her skin off her bones. Furious thoughts raged through Carly Beth's mind. She tensed her muscles, crouched low, and prepared to pounce. But before she could make her move, the two boys pulled their mother away. Let's go, Mom. Yeah, let's go. She's crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. Crazy. The word repeated, roaring through Carly Beth's the word repeated, roaring through Carly Beth's mind. The mask grew hotter, tighter. It's so scary that it's getting hotter and tighter, the angrier she's getting. That's a very, very scary concept. So the woman and the boys finally leave. Thank God. We are too early in this book for her to do a murder, let alone three. Carly Beth stared after them, panting loudly. She had a strong urge to chase after them, to really scare them. But a loud cry made her stop and spin around. Sabrina stood on the front stoop, Who's there? She cried, squinting into the darkness. Sabrina was dressed as Catwoman. Nice. She seems cool, actually. I'm coming around to Sabrina. Now that I know how much Carly Beth sucks, I kind of see where Sabrina's coming from. Don't you recognize me? Carly Beth rasped, stepping closer. She could see the fright in Sabrina's eyes. Sabrina gripped the door handle tightly, standing half in, half out of her house. Don't you recognize me, Sabrina? She waved the head on the broomstick as if giving her friend a clue. Sabrina gasped and raised her hand to her mouth as she noticed the head on the pole. Carly Beth, is that you? She stammered. Her eyes darted from the mask to the head, then back again. Hi, Sabrina. Carly Beth growled. It's me. <laughs> Sabrina continued to study her. That mask, she cried finally. It's excellent. Really excellent. It's so scary. I like your cat suit, Curly Beth told her. <laughs> Compliments sound better when you say them like you're sneezing them out. Sabrina's eyes were raised to the top of the broomstick. That head, it's so real. Where did you get it? Mom made it, Carly Beth told her. In her art class. This voice is not fun to do. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. Sabrina studied Carly Beth's mask. Wait till Chuck and Steve see her costume. I can't wait, Carly Beth thought darkly. Where are they? She demanded, glancing back to the street. Steve called, Sabrina replied. He said they'd be late. He has to take his little sister trick-or-treating before he can meet us. We'll start without them, Sabrina suggested. They can catch up to us later. Yeah, okay, Carly Beth replied. I'll get my coat and we can go, Sabrina said. She took one last lingering look at the head on the broomstick. Then the storm door slammed shut with a bang as she disappeared inside to get her coat. The wind picked up as the two girls made their way down the block. Dead leaves swirled at their feet. The bare trees bent and shivered. Above the dark sloping roofs, the pale half moon slipped in and out of the clouds. Sabrina chattered about all the problems she'd had with her costume. The first cat suit she'd bought had a long run in one leg and had to be returned. Then Sabrina couldn't find a cat-eyed mask that looked quite right. Carly Beth remained quiet. She couldn't hide her disappointment that Chuck and Steve hadn't met them as planned. What if they never catch up to us, she wondered. What if we don't see them at all? The whole point of the night, as far as Carly Beth was concerned, was meeting the two boys and scaring the living daylights out of them. Sabrina had given her a shopping bag to put her candy in. She didn't even show up with a trick-or-treat sack? Carly Beth, you couldn't even grab a pillowcase on your way out? 
Carly, Beth, you are not prepared for this adventure. As they walked, Carly, Beth gripped the bag in one hand, struggling to keep the head balanced on the pole with her other hand. So where did you buy your mask? Your mother didn't make it, did she? Did you go to that new party store? Can I touch it? Carly, Beth obediently stopped so that her friend could touch the mask. Sabrina pressed her fingers against the cheek, then instantly jerked them back. Oh, it feels like skin. <laughs> Yuck, what's it made of? Sabrina demanded. It isn't skin, is it? It's some kind of rubber, right? A guess, Carly Beth muttered. How come it's so warm? Sabrina asked. Is it uncomfortable to wear? You must be sweating like a pig. Feeling a surge of rage, Carly Beth dropped the bag and the broomstick. Shut up, shut up, she snarled. Then with an angry howl, she grabbed Sabrina's throat with both hands and began to choke her. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my God, girl. Fur all over me. Just increasing amounts of fur on my shirt as the night progresses. Right now, power rankings wise, they're all terrible, but Sabrina's the least bad. She has done no violences. She didn't put a worm in anyone's sandwich. She got her science fair project wrecked because of someone else. Two other someone else's. Like, get your shit together, Carly Beth. You're gonna need to flail everywhere. Sabrina uttered a shocked cry and staggered back. What is happening to me? Carly Beth wondered, gaping in horror at her friend. Why did I do that? Uh, gotcha! <laughs> Pranked! I did a violence, but it was a joke. You see, she laughed. You should have seen the look on your face, Sabrina. Did you think I was really choking you? <laughs> Sabrina rubbed her neck with one silver gloved hand. She frowned at her friend. That was a joke. You scare me to death. Carly Beth laughed again. Just creeping in character, she said lightly, pointing to her mask. You know, trying to get in the right mood. <laughs> I like scaring people, you know? Usually I'm, I'm the one who's scared. <laughs> she picked up the bag and broomstick, fixing the plaster of Harris' head on top. And it didn't break? Girl, lucky. Don't drop it again, though. I wonder if she drops it again. Something's gonna happen to that head. I bet my head on it. Then she hurried up the nearest driveway toward a well-lighted house with a happy Halloween banner in the front window. Does Sabrina believe it was just a joke? Carly Beth asked herself as she raised her shopping bag and rang the doorbell. What on earth was I doing? I don't know, girl. Sabrina stepped up beside her as the front door was pulled open. Two little blonde kids, a boy and a girl, appeared in the doorway. Their mother stepped up behind them. Trick or treat, Carly Beth and Sabrina called out in unison. Ooh, that's a scary mask, the woman said to her two children, grinning at Carly Beth. Yeah, that's what she sounds like. What are you supposed to be, a cat? The little boy asked Sabrina. Sabrina meowed at him. All right, Sabrina, girl. I don't like the other one, the little girl exclaimed to her mother. It's too scary. Hey, it's just a funny mask, the mother assured her daughter. Too scary. It's scaring me, the little girl insisted. Can you tell my voice is really starting to hurt? We're, in, we're halfway through. I'm boned. Carly Beth leaned into the entryway of the house, bringing her grotesque face up close to the little girl. I'll eat you up, she growled nastily. The little girl screamed and disappeared into the house. Her brother stared wide-eyed at Carly Beth. The mother quickly dropped candy bars into the girl's bags. Ew, you shouldn't have scared her, she said softly. She has nightmares. Instead of apologizing, Carly Beth turned to the little boy. I'll eat you up too, she snarled. <laughs> Carly Beth's on a roll. This mask is great, loves to make friends. Hey, stop, the woman protested. Carly Beth laughed a deep-throated laugh, jumped off the porch, and took off across the front lawn. Why'd you do that? Sabrina asked as they made their way across the street. Why'd you scare those kids like that? The mask made me do it, Carly Beth replied. She meant it as a joke, but the thought troubled her mind. At the next few houses, Carly Beth hung back and let Sabrina do the talking. Good idea, girl. Very worrying, honestly. This is all very worrying. I'm gonna have a drink. More shenanigans happen. Carly Beth gets an apple. Carly Beth throws the apple at the house. I like apples. I think apples are good, actually. Best apple, Cosmic Crisp. Second best apple? Yes. <laughs> Carly Beth then decides to suggest that they split up, saying, we'll get more candy that way, which does not make sense, Carly Beth. Sabrina frowned at her friend, eyeing her suspiciously. Carly Beth, you don't even like candy. What is Carly Beth's problem? 
I don't like her at all. It's okay to not like candy. It is not okay to not like candy and be this unpleasant of a person. These are the rules. I don't make them. I just tell you all about them. But Carly Beth was already running up the driveway to the first house, her sculpted head bobbing wildly above her on its broomstick. This is my night, Carly Beth thought, accepting a candy bar from the smiling woman who answered the door. My night. So she gets to the end of the block and spots four very young trick-or-treaters giggling as they approach a house with a jack-o'-lantern on the porch. Carly Beth sank back into the darkness. She heard voices, boys' voices. Chuck and Steve? No, the voices were unfamiliar. How about a little scare for you guys, Carly Beth thought, a smile spreading across her face. How about something to remember this Halloween night? She's just terrorizing the neighborhood. I don't like, she has four chapters just been terrorizing the neighborhood. She waited, listening until they were a few feet away. She could see them now, two mummies, their faces wrapped in gauze. Closer, closer. She waited for the perfect moment. Then she burst from the shadows, uttering an angry animal howl that shattered the air. The two boys gasped and jumped back. Hey! One of them tried to shout, but his voice caught in his throat. The other one dropped his bag of candy. As he started to pick it up, Carly Beth moved quickly. She grabbed the bag from his hand, jerked it away from him, and started to run. Come back! That's mine! Their voices were high and shrill, filled with fear and surprise. As she ran across the street, Carly Beth glanced back to see if they were following her. They weren't. They were too frightened. Holding the stolen candy bag tightly in her free hand, Carly Beth tossed back her head and laughed. A cruel laugh, a triumphant laugh, a laugh she had never heard before. She emptied the boy's candy into her own bag, then tossed his bag onto the ground. She felt good, really good, really strong and ready for more fun. Come on, Chuck and Steve, she thought. It's your turn next. Dun, dun, dun. Carly Beth on Chuck and Steve a few minutes later. What an anticlimactic transition. Thank you, RL. I love that. That's great. It's nice knowing where we're going and then immediately when we're there. So they're across the street from her and she sees them and ducks behind the wide trunk of an old tree near the sidewalk. RL tells us that neither of them had bothered to do a real costume. Chuck had a red bandana tied around his head and a black mask over his eyes. But then he describes Steve's costume and he says that Steve had blackened his cheeks and forehead with big smudges and wore an old tennis hat and a torn raincoat. And Carly Beth guesses that he's supposed to be an unhoused person. And this is not the word she uses, but I am paraphrasing. What the fuck? Hey, RL, what the fuck? Are you sure? Hey, RL, are you sure? I mean, I guess that means Steve's in the power rankings the worst one, but I don't know if RL knows that. <laughs> Awesome, RL. What a, what a cool Halloween costume. She watched them sift through their bags. They'd been out for quite a while, she saw. Their bags appeared pretty full. Suddenly, Steve glanced up in her direction. So she jerks her head back behind the tree. And he didn't see her yet, so we're good. All clear. So she watches them make their way up the front porch of the next house and then darts away from the tree, runs across the street, and ducks low behind a hedge. So she's like, okay, they're going to come back down the driveway. I'm going to jump out at them. I'm going to pounce on them. I'm going to scare them to death. But then she starts to doubt herself, which unfortunately for Chuck and Steve makes her angrier because she's angry at herself for doubting herself, which is just manifesting as anger in general. And so she works herself up into like a real frenzy by the time Chuck and Steve start walking back down the driveway. Okay, she thought, taking a deep breath. Here goes. Dun, dun, dun. This is going great. Honestly, most of this book has been about a bullied girl beating the shit out of everyone in her neighborhood for like 10 chapters. And it's not the, it's not my favorite Goosebumps book so far. It doesn't really have a likable protagonist. It doesn't really have likable people that the protagonist's bad actions are affecting. It's got my favorite holiday in it other than Passover, which slaps. But other than that, like, it doesn't have a lot going for it. Like, the premise is creepy. Don't get me wrong. Premise? Great. Characters? Not so good. Don't like them. Don't like the characters. I'm not rooting for any of them. The only character I like so far is her mom. It all seemed to happen in slow motion. The two boys moved slowly past the hedge. They were talking excitedly to each other, but to Carly Beth, their voices seemed low and far away. She pulled herself up, 
stepped out from the hedge and screamed at the top of her lungs. Even in the dim light, she could see their reactions clearly. Their eyes went wide. Their mouths dropped open. Carly Beth's scream echoed over the dark front lawn. The sound seemed to hover in the air. Everything moved so slowly. So slowly, Carly Beth could see Chuck's eyebrows quiver. She could see his chin tremble. She could see the fear shimmer in Steve's eyes as they moved from her mask up to the head of the broomstick. She waved the broomstick menacingly. Steve uttered a frightened whimper. Chuck gaped at Carly Beth, his frightened eyes locked on hers. Carly Beth, is that you? He finally managed to choke out. Carly Beth uttered an animal growl, but didn't reply. Who are you? Steve demanded, his voice trembling. It's Carly Beth, I think, Chuck told him. It's you in there, isn't it, Carly Beth? Steve let out a tense laugh. You scared us. Carly Beth, is that you? Chuck demanded again. Carly Beth waved the broomstick. She pointed up to the head. That's Carly Beth's head, she told them. And they're both like, what are you talking about? She's like, that's Carly Beth's head. The painted eyes of the sculpted face appeared to glare down at them. Poor Carly Beth didn't want to give up her head tonight. But I took it anyway. Steve's like, Carly Beth, how are you doing that voice? I'm dressed as the worst thing you could possibly be. But I feel like I can pass judgment on someone else. And then Carly Beth is like, hand over your candy, which is funny. Carly Beth, give us a break, Chuck muttered uncertainly, his eyes still narrowed in fear. Hand over your bags or your heads will adorn my stick. She lowered the broomstick toward them menacingly. And as she lowered it, all three of them stared up at the dark-eyed face. All three of them studied the frozen face, the face that looked so real, that looked so much like Carly Beth Caldwell. A sudden breeze swirled around them, making the head bob on the stick. And then all three of them saw the eyes blink. Once, twice, the brown eyes blinked, and the lips and the head parted, making a dry, scraping sound. Frozen in horror, Carly Beth stared up at the face along with the two boys. All three of them saw the lips move and heard the dry, crackling sound. All three of them saw the bobbing head form the silent words, Help me. Help me. Dun, dun, dun. That is scary, though. RL, how can you make me so mad at you and then make a good chapter happen in the same chapter? RL, I'm afraid of how angry I am at you and then also the genuine fear. This is a real whirlwind of emotions. So in the immediate aftermath, Carly Beth drops the stick in fear. The boys run off, obviously. And Carly Beth is merely like, obviously, even though we all saw that and heard that, it was a trick of the light. Uh, I'm being silly. Uh, my mom is an artist. She's not a wizard. This head is not magic. It did not talk. But unfortunately, the th thing she does next is immediately leave the broomstick and the head on the ground outside and run. She, she runs away. She got her victory. She scared her shitty little friends. And she doesn't care if she breaks her mom's heart. So she just ditches the head and sprints off into the darkness. Holding her bulging candy bag, she ran past startled trick-or-treaters, past glowing pumpkins, past rattling skeletons. She ran until her breath gave out. Then she stopped, panting loudly, and shut her eyes, waiting for her heart to stop pounding, for the blood to stop pulsing at her temples. And a hand grabbed her shoulder roughly from behind. Dun, dun, dun! It was Sabrina! Ooh, Sabrina's back! You know, I started out not liking her, and I've really come around to her. She's mean, but she's not, like, dress up as an unhoused person to be funny mean. And she's not steal candy from four-year-olds mean. She's, like, normal mean. A mean I can get behind in this specific instance and only this one. I'm rooting for her. She's the only one to root for. She's the only one you can root for. She's our final girl. Sabrina's, like... I lost you. Where were you? I was looking for you forever. And Carly Beth's like, how did you do on your Halloween quest? I didn't do anything weird tonight. And Sabrina's like, did you scare anyone with the mask? I'm really coming around to her. I feel bad for judging her. I didn't know how shitty her friend was. I didn't realize. Yeah, a few kids, Carly Beth replied casually. It's really gross, Sabrina said. That's why I picked it. They both laughed. Did you get a lot of candy? Sabrina asked. She picked up Carly Beth's bag and looked inside. Wow, what a haul. I hit a lot of houses, 
Carly Beth said. Let's go back to my house and check out the loot, Sabrina suggested. Carly Beth followed her friend across the street. Unless you want to trick or treat some more, Sabrina offered, stopping in the middle of the street. Not safe, Sabrina. Are you trying to get your friend hit by a car? Which honestly, at this point, probably for the best. No, I've done enough, Carly Beth said. She laughed to herself. I did everything I wanted to do tonight. They started walking again. Did you see Steve and Chuck? Sabrina asked. I searched everywhere for them. That's all I did tonight. I spent the whole night looking for everybody. You, Steve, and Chuck. How come we never got together? Carly Beth shrugged. I saw them, she told her friend, a few minutes ago. Back there. One of the most ring, most insensitive bullshit I've ever seen in my life. They're such scaredy cats. Huh? Steve and Chuck. Sabrina's expression turned to surprise. Yeah, they got one look at my mask and they took off. Carly Beth told her, laughing. They were screaming like babies. <laughs> Sabrina joined in the laughter. I don't believe it, she exclaimed. They always act so tough and called after them. They just kept running. Carly Beth told her, grinning. Weird, Sabrina declared. Yeah, weird, Carly Beth agreed. Do they know it was you? Sabrina asked. Carly Beth shrugged. I don't know. They took one look at me and they ran like rabbits. They told me they were planning to scare you, Sabrina said. They were going to sneak up behind you and make like scary noises or something. Carly Beth snickered. It's hard to sneak up behind someone when you're running for your life. So Sabrina says that she got some good stuff, but unfortunately she has to share her candy with her cousin who has the flu so they couldn't trick or treat that night, which is so sad. Sabrina's cousin is the best character in the book so far. Sabrina's cousin with the flu. What are you all going to be for Halloween? Comment below. Are you going to have the flu? They're discussing what candies they like, what candies they think are bad. And Sabrina takes her mask off and was like, oh, so warm. Carly Beth, do you want to take your mask off? It must be so hot. Uh, yeah, good idea. Carly Beth had actually forgotten she was wearing a mask. She reached up with both hands and tugged at the ears. Ouch. The mask didn't budge. She pulled it by the top of the head. Then she started stretching it out and tugging it from the cheeks. Ouch. What's wrong? Sabrina asked, concentrating on sorting her candy into piles. Carly Beth didn't reply. She tried prying the mask off at the neck. Then she tugged it up by the ears again. Carly Beth, what's wrong? Sabrina asked. Help me, Carly Beth pleaded in a shrill, frightened voice. Help me, please. I don't know how to make it be gravelly, but also shrill. RL, make up your mind. The mask, it won't come off. Dun, dun, dun. Sabrina tells her to stop clowning around. Carly Beth insists she's not clowning around. Sabrina's like, I'm sick of your shit, boy who cried wolf. I'm sorting my candy. Deal with your own problems. But Carly Beth is like, no, for realsies, this is on my head forever. I'm going to be stuck in this forever. Bailey can't do this voice much longer or her voice will permanently be damaged from it. That's no good. No one wants that. <laughs> so once Sabrina's finally convinced that Carly Beth really can't get the mask off, she comes over. She's like, all right, I'm going to help. I'm going to do this for you. They spend about three pages trying debating how to get the mask off. And then Sabrina says something actually pretty scary, which she says, she says, Carly Beth, there's something very weird going on here. What? What are you talking about? Carly Beth demanded. There is no bottom to the mask. Dun, dun, dun. That's not the end of the chapter. That's just really scary. There's no line between the mask and the skin. There's no place for anyone to slip their hand in the mask and her there's nowhere to take it off. Carly Beth realized that her friend was right. There was no longer a bottom to the mask. No place where the mask ended. No opening between the mask and Carly Beth's skin. The mask had become her face. Dun, dun, dun. So Carly Beth runs and looks at her face in the mirror and gasps. Sabrina tries to calm her down. Carly Beth is freaking out. Obviously, that's so scary. I'm drinking again. Carly Beth runs away from her, fleeing out of the house and into the darkness, leaving her coat behind. She's so upset. She's crying. She's like, I'm trapped in this mask forever. I don't know who I am anymore. Oh my God, what is happening to me? Goodbye. And sprints out into the night. She spends about four pages sprinting away from her friend through the darkness, terrified of what it is she's become, so scared she can't take the mask off. And then she glances up to see that she had run into a group of trick-or-treaters who scream when they see her. There were six or seven of them all turned toward her, screaming and pointing. She opened her mouth wide, revealing the sharp fangs, and growled at them a deep animal growl. What are you supposed to be? A girl in a red and white ruffled clown costume called to her. I'm supposed to be me, but I'm not, Carly Beth thought bitterly. Fucking zing, Carly Beth. 
only you could vocalize these sharp thoughts. So she cries more and she runs more. And then she sees the party store and she stops short. And she's like, of course, the party store. The strange man in the cape, he'll help me. He'll know what to do. Girl, he is at a rager for strange men who run party stores and wear capes. There is no way he's still there. The man in the cape will know how to get this mask off. Feeling a surge of hope, Carly Beth jogged toward the store, but as she neared it, her hope dimmed as dark as the store window. Through the glass, she could see that all the lights were out. The store was as dark as the night. It was closed. Girl, the store closed at five, and it's like 11 now. Of course it's closed. What were you expecting? Carly Beth. Dun, dun, dun. More like da, da, da. What's up? And then the door rattled and opened a few inches. The store owner poked his head out. His eyes narrowed as they studied Carly Beth. I stayed late, he said. I expected to see you again. I can't do a French accent when my throat hurts. French people, how do you do it? I I can't get it off, she sputtered. I know, the man said. Come inside. Carly Beth hesitated, then walked quickly into the dark store. It was very warm inside. Okay, how did you even notice at this point you're like wearing a rubber mask? and have been for several hours. Everything is warm. The owner turned on a single light above the front counter. He was no longer wearing the cape, Carly Beth saw. He wore black suit pants and a white dress shirt. You knew I'd come back. I didn't want to sell it to you. You remember, don't you? You remember that I did not want to sell it to you? I remember, Carly Beth replied impatiently. Just help me take it off, okay? He stared hard at her. He didn't reply. Help me take it off. I want you to take it off. He sighed. I cannot, he told her sadly. I cannot take it off. I'm very sorry. Dun, dun, dun. Carly demands that he explain what the fuck it is he means. He lowered his voice. Because it is not a mask. Carly Beth gaped at him. She opened her mouth, but no sound came out. It is not a mask. It is a real face. Carly Beth suddenly felt dizzy. The floor tilted. The rows of ugly faces glared at her. All of the bulging, bloodshot, yellow and green eyes seemed to be trained on her. Imagine if she had picked the one with the ratatouille on it. What a different story this would be. It would be ratatouille. He's the one behind these recipes. He's the cook. He's been controlling my actions. The store owner walked over to the display shelf and gestured to the ugly staring heads. The unloved, he said sadly, his voice lowered to a whisper. They are not masks. They are faces, he explained. Real faces. I made them. I created them in my lab. In your lab? In your lab? You're a scientist? You cape-wearing buffoon? Carly Best like, but they're so ugly, which is not helping in this situation. They were not ugly in the beginning, he interrupted, his voice bitter, his eyes angry. They were beautiful and they were alive, but something went wrong. When they were taken out of my lab, they changed my experiments. My poor heads were a failure, but I had to keep them alive. I had to. Carly Beth's like, I don't believe it. French man is like, I'm telling the truth. I'm an evil scientist somehow. And then I run a costume shop on the side for like when the grant money doesn't come through, I guess. I keep them here. I call them the unloved because no one would ever want to see them. Occasionally, someone wanders into the back room. You, for example. And one of my faces finds a new home. Carly Beth uttered a cry of protest, more an animal wail than a human cry. She stared at the gnarled, twisted faces on the shelf, the bulging heads, the open wounds, the animal fangs. Monsters. Take this off, she screamed, losing control. Take this off. Take it off. He raised a hand to quiet her. I am sorry. The face is your face now, he said. (laughs) Rough one, buddy. Carly Beth tore at the face, but even in her anger and panic, she knew her actions were useless. The face can be removed. Huh? Carly Beth lowered her hands. What did you say? I cannot do it for you, he replied, but I can tell you how. However, if it ever again attaches itself to you or another person... It will be forever. I wonder if that'll come back. How do I get it off? Tell me. Tell me, Carly Beth begged. How do I get it off? Dun, dun, dun. That was a pretty weak dun, dun, dun. I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna. It's not automatic, or else You don't just get one. You have to earn it. Boys. And so he tells her it can only be removed once by a symbol of love. Carly Beth's like, that is not helpful. What the fuck are you talking about? He's like, I can say no more. (laughs) 
which is also not helpful, actually, which is actually less helpful, I would say. Carly Beth is throwing a temper tantrum because he won't expand on this. She's screaming at the top of her lungs now, but she didn't care. The store owner backed away, motioning with both hands for her to be quiet. Then suddenly his eyes opened wide in fear. Oh, she uttered a startled cry of horror as she saw the rows of faces all begin to move. Ah, it's so scary. Oh my God. Bulging eyes blinked. Swollen tongues licked at dry lips. Dark wounds began to pulsate. The heads were all bobbing, blinking, breathing. What's happening? Carly Beth cried in a trembling whisper. You've awakened them all. But run, he screamed, giving her a hard shove toward the doorway. Run! Oh my God, dun dun dun. How that even happened, girl? Or else better have a good explanation for this. Oh, this is so scary. Okay, I have to read. Tragically, I must read a lot of this because it is very scary. Carly Beth hesitated. She turned back to stare at the heads bobbing on the shelves. Fat, dark lips began to move, making wet sucking sounds. Crooked fangs clicked up and down. Ugly and human noses twitched and gasped air noisily. The heads, two long rows of them, throbbed to life, and the eyes, the blood-veined, bulging eyes, the green eyes, the sickly yellow eyes, the bright scarlet eyes, the disgusting eyeballs hanging by threads, they were all on her. The store owner keeps screaming at her to run that she's awakened them. Carly Beth wanted to run, but her, her legs wouldn't cooperate. Her knees felt wobbly and weak. She suddenly felt as if she weighed a thousand pounds. All this horrible stuff is happening. The shopkeeper is like, girl, what are you still doing here? Get the fuck out. And then finally, she forces her legs to move. With a burst of energy, she began to run. She ran through the dimly lit front room of the store. Her hands grabbed for the doorknob and she pulled open the door. A second later, she was out on the sidewalk, running through the darkness. Her sneakers thudded loudly on the pavement. She held a shock of cold air against her hot face. Her hot green face. Her monster face. Her monster face she could not remove. Okay, so she's feeling the cold air against the mask. That's bad. What was that sound? That deep, gurgling sound? Oh no, Carly Beth cried out as she glanced back and saw the gruesome heads flying after her. A ghoulish parade. Hanging balloons vibes happening here. What is this? It's so scary. It's RL. This is a very scary mental image. It is already scary. She can't take the mask off. Why did you do this? RL, why? Choked with fear, Carly Beth stumbled over the curb. Her arms shot forward as she struggled to regain her balance. Her legs wanted to collapse, but she forced them to move again. Bent into the wind, she ran past dark houses and empty lots. It must be late, she realized. It must be really late. Too late. The words flashed into her mind. Too late for me. The hideous glowing heads flew after her, getting closer, closer. The rumbling of their animal murmurs grew louder in her ears until the frightening sound seemed to surround her. The wind roared, gusting hard. Gusting? Gusting hard? Is gusting a verb? I refuse to believe it is. Unacceptable to me. The murmuring heads floated closer, and then an idea formed its way through her nightmarish panic. As she ran, her arms thrashing the air in front of her as if reaching for safety, her mind struggled for a solution, an escape, a symbol of love. Oh, I know what she's going to grab. That took me a while. Fuck. <laughs> Turns out Chekhov's plaster of Paris head came back in a way I wasn't expecting. All right, you know what she's going to go get. I know what she's going to go get. Let's not dilly-dally here. She has to go fucking find the head that she threw. And she tells herself that repeatedly over several pages. And then she finally reaches the tall hedge. And she had let that she let the head fall behind the hedge, which is hard to say. And that's why she did it. To me. Sucking in a deep breath of air, her arms reaching out desperately in front of her, she turned and ran across the street and dove behind the hedge. Onto her hands and knees, her chest heaving, her breath rasping, her head pounding. She reached for the head, but it was gone. Dun, dun, dun. And then she turns around and it's just between two roots and a, like at a big tree near the driveway. So, all right. I have seven pages left and I have to pour myself more drink. This is all R.L. Stein's fault. Mr. Stein, you and I need to have words. With a cry of triumph, she turned the sculpted face toward the jabbering heads and raised it high. Go away, she screamed, holding the head up so they could all see it. This is a symbol of love. Go away. The heads bobbed together. The glowing eyes stared at the sculpted head. They murmured excitedly. Wet smiles formed on their distorted lips. Go away. Carly Beth heard them laugh. Low, scornful laughter. Then they moved quickly, surrounding her, eager to swallow her up. Dun, dun, dun. Could it be that mean Frenchman lied again? Oh, that. Her idea had failed. 
The heads swarmed around her, drooled over her, eyes bulging gleefully in triumph. Their rumbling murmurs became a roar. She felt herself being swallowed up in their foul-smelling heat. Without thinking, she lowered the sculpted head and pulled it down hard over her hideous monster head. To her surprise, it slid over her like a mask. Oh my God, that's so weird. Girl, you've got so many layers on. You got too much fucking shit on you. Too much fucking shit on me. I can't breathe. Darkness descended. There were no eye holes. She couldn't see out. She couldn't hear. What will the gruesome heads do to me, she wondered, alone with her fear. Will I become one of the unloved now? Will I end up on display, on a shelf, along with them? Surrounded by the tight, silent darkness, Carly Beth waited and waited. She could feel the blood pulsing at her temples. She could feel the throb of fear in her chest, the ache of her dry throat. Feel you, girl. What are they going to do? What are they doing? She couldn't bear being alone, shut in with her fear, surrounded by silence in the dark. With a hard tug, she pulled off the sculpted head. The gruesome heads were gone, vanished. Yay! That's convenient. For a long moment, Carly Beth sat in the cold, wet grass, the sculpted head in her lap, breathing hard, staring across the silent, empty front yards. Soon her breathing returned to normal. She climbed to her feet. The wind had gentled. The pale half moon slipped out from behind the dark clouds that had covered it. Carly Beth felt something flap against her throat. Startled, she reached up and felt the bottom of the mask. The bottom of the mask? Yes, there was a gap between the mask and her neck. Hey, she cried aloud. She raised both hands to the bottom of the mask and pulled up. It came off easily. Stunned, she lowered it and held it in front of her and then folded it up and then unfolded it. The orange eyes that had glowed like fire faded. The pointed animal fangs had become rubbery and limp. You're just a mask, she cried aloud. Just a mask again. Laughing gleefully, she tossed it up in the air and caught it. It can be removed only once, the store owner had told her. Only once by a symbol of love. Well, I've done it, Carly Beth told herself happily. I've removed it. And don't worry, I'll never put it on again. She suddenly felt exhausted. I've got to get home, she told herself. It's probably close to midnight. Most of the houses were dark. There were no cars moving on the streets. The trick-or-treaters had all gone home. So she picks up the sculpted head and the mask, and she heads toward her house. And when she gets to her house, she's like, okay, I think my face feels normal, but I'm actually not sure. I have to, like, look at it in a mirror and make sure it's, like, totally normal. And she opens the door and sees Noah, and he starts screaming and says, take off the mask. Sorry, take off the mask. Take it off. You're so ugly. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. The mask is still on her, baby. Carly Beth cries out in horror. The mask must have changed her face, she realized. She pushed past her brother, tossed down the head and the mask, and ran to the hallway mirror. Her face stared back at her. Perfectly normal. Her old face. Her good old face. I'll never complain about my nose again, she thought happily. Her face was normal again. All normal. As she stared at herself, she could hear Noah laughing at the doorway. She spun around angrily. Noah, how could you? He laughed harder. I can't believe you fell for it. It was no joke to me, Carly Beth exclaimed angrily. Her mother appeared at the end of the hall. Carly Beth, where have you been? I expected you back an hour ago. Sorry, Mom, Carly Beth replied, grinning. It's a long story, sort of a weird long story. Her mom's really nice about it. She's like, okay, well, you're going to explain over some nice hot cider that I made for you. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed, blah, blah, blah. So Carly Beth begins to tell the story to her mom when suddenly, before she can say another word, Noah bursts into the room. Hey, Carly Beth, he called in a deep, raspy voice. Look at me. How do I look in your mask? Dun, dun, dun. Oh my God. That's the end of the book. I think that I will say when the book got go, when the book gets going, it's good. It's scary. It's just, I will say there's a lot of filler at the beginning. The worm prank is enough to motivate Carly Beth to get the mask. The tarantula thing felt like He had two ideas and couldn't decide which one was better. So he just would, he just did both of them and you don't need both. Frankly, the worm one was the correct one to go with. That's the, that's the one to keep for sure. They made her eat a real worm. That is, that is motivation. If I've ever heard it for doing something bullshitty like that. But I also think that Car- that Carly Beth herself is not a particularly likable character. Her only trait is being scared all the time and wanting vengeance for it, which isn't particularly endearing. So I would say that it's probably, if I were to make some editorial notes, I would say having her be a little bit more likable would maybe be helpful to empathize with her plight here, you know? Because it kind of seems like the lesson she learned is to 
never feel bad about her own face. And that's not really like the problem that we were having at the beginning of the book. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, I will say this one, I've read better. I have read better. But when it gets going, I did think that the really scary moments were really scary. I don't really, I wish, I I think the major thing is I do wish I understood the shopkeeper's motivation a little better here. Like everything he's doing seems to be like, he created the masks, but he's afraid of the masks. Uh, Don't, he doesn't want people to buy the masks, but he leaves the door open for them to find it. Here's how, here's your hint for how to get out of the masks. I won't tell you more about it. Like, I wish I understood the villain's motivation better. I feel like there are books where it like makes that a little clearer. And I think it, it contributes to the narrative in a way that makes it ultimately stronger. I'm drunk. Thank you everyone for watching. I stream on Twitch nearly every day at Balian versus Predator. So be sure to stop by. Uh, there will be a blooper reel for this going up on my Patreon. So if you're interested in being on my Patreon, you should be on my Patreon. It would be so fun and cool of you. I think that's all I got. I think if there's any takeaway from this, it's um, don't wear masks on Halloween. Oh, God. <laughs> Never mind. I actually don't know what the lesson is here. Happy Halloween! Ha, ha, ha.